So the next term that I want to talk about is this antigen presenting cells over here, uh, which is known as APCs. So this is uh, about cell-mediated immunity. We talk about the, the T cells are the stars of the cell-mediated immunity, right? But the T cells that can you know, attack infected cells or foreign uh, tissues and cells, these T cells are originally naive T cells. Naive T cells. So this just means that those T cells have never been exposed to the antigens. They don't know what the antigens like. They don't know what to do. So that's why they're called naive T cells. So these naive T cells need to be exposed to the antigens so that they know what they're looking for. That's the job for antigen-presenting cells. So these antigen-presenting cells um, can swallow the antigens and present part of the antigens on the cell surface and present the antigen to the T cells. And once the T cells are exposed to that, then the T cells become the functional T cells and they know what they're looking for you know, in terms of the antigen and they can you know, look for their targets and try to destroy the targets. There are quite a few types of cells that can be uh, considered antigen presenting cells. For example, dendritic cells, macrophages. Remember macrophages are just monocytes that enter the tissues, right? They are uh, phagocytes with a, a large appetite, so macrophages. And some of the B cells can also do the job of presenting antigens to T cells, okay? So that's what APCs are. All right, now let's look at the differences between passive and active immunity. Sometimes these terms can be very confusing, right? If you are given a specific example and you're asked to differentiate whether that example is about passive or active immunity, how do you do that? Now, the key is to remember whether your body makes the antibodies or your body receives the antibodies from another source. If your body makes your own antibodies, then that's going to be active immunity, right? You are doing the work. But if your body simply receives the antibodies from a different source, then that's going to be passive immunity, right? Because you didn't do any work, you just received it. So here are some examples of passive immunity where you acquire the antibodies from another source. If you're a baby, um, you are drinking breast milk. Now breast milk, has antibodies made by the mother's body. Or if you are a fetus, you know, growing in the uh, uterus, then the mother, uh, the fetus, they exchange blood, right? So the mother's uh, antibodies in the mother's blood can be transported to the baby's blood. That's an example of passive immunity. Another example is um, artificially acquired. That's when you receive the antibodies from another person or animal. Okay, so for example, we have used um, COVID-19 antibodies produced by patients who have been infected, right, to save other patients. Patient A, patient A has COVID-19 or had COVID-19 but has recovered recovered and then she donates her blood which contains the COVID-19 antibody antibody and the antibody can be extracted and given to other patients who are currently going through COVID-19 and they may have you know more severe symptoms so patient B really needs the antibody to fight the disease, right? So the antibody extracted from patient A, produced by patient A, can be given to patient B. And then patient B has the immunity, right, from the antibody. So patient B has the passive immunity, right, because the patient B's body um, doesn't make the antibody, right? The antibody comes from another person. All right, now examples of active immunity. If you have been exposed to the pathogen, then naturally your body will make antibody. Right? So that's active immunity. And another example of active immunity is vaccination. Right? Once you receive a vaccine, then your body is going to make antibodies in response to the vaccine. 
because a vaccine usually contains inactivated or dead pathogen, which uh, works as a, an antigen, right? So your body is exposed to the antigen and your body is going to make antibodies. The next topic is about the immune system and other body systems. So T's always has a component where you're expected to know the relationship between a particular body system and other body systems. So for the immune system, you kind of need to know the relationship between the immune system and some of the other body systems. Circulatory system contains a blood, right? And we know that a lot of the immune molecules, the chemicals, and the cells are in the blood, right? So they can kind of patrol the body through blood because the blood is literally the highway system of your body, right? The transport system. It can transport anything to every part of your body. So that's the relationship between immune system and the circulatory system. Lymphatic system, that's um, actually very important because the lymphatic system is, can be considered a part of the immune system because uh, a lot of the important functions that the, the system performs is related to protection. I will have a second um, part on the lymphatic system. So we'll talk about that in more detail uh, in just a second. Red bone marrow, this is a part of the skeletal system, right? Red bone marrow is um, kind of inside a, a bone, could be a long bone, could be a irregular bone, flat bone. So red bone marrow is where the production of blood cells, including you know, all the leukocytes, uh, takes place, right? So the uh, immune cells, right? B cells, T cells, those are all produced in the red bone marrow. And in the case of B cells, they also mature in red bone marrow, right? So they're produ produced there and they also go through maturation in bone marrow. Our integumentary system, that's the mostly the skin, right? So we know that the skin is part of the physical barrier of the, the first line of defense uh, in the immune system. Uh, the last topic is going to be about common immune diseases. And I uh, indeed have seen a couple of questions on immune system diseases. Now there are three conditions that are related to our immune response. First one is called immunodeficiency based on the name that you know that this is an abnormal condition, right? Where the immune system uh, is not as strong as it should be. So this is due to the impairment of production or function of immune cells or molecules. So a very good example, which you may see on T's is AIDS. Okay. So AIDS is a disease that is caused by HIV, right? That's the virus, human immunodeficiency virus. Now this virus particularly infects helper T cells. It only affects helper T cells. Now, if you remember, we talk about how important helper T cell is, right, to the adaptive immune response because it activates and promotes both B cells and the cytotoxic T cells, right? So B cells are involved in tumor immune response and T, the cytotoxic T cells are the actual, you know, killer cells that attack infected cells or foreign cells or cancer cells. So that's the main star of the cellular in, in your response, right? So if the helper T cell is compromised, right, because of the infection by HIV, then that's going to um, affect both humor and cellular mediated immunity. So that's why people with AIDS um, often get sick, right? They're uh, more susceptible to infections uh, more than uh, a, a healthy person. Second a group of conditions uh, are autoimmune diseases. Now, in the case of an autoimmune disease, for you know various reasons, the body fails to recognize self tissues, and a result as a result. The body thinks these self tissues are foreign invaders, so the body will mount immune response against these self tissues. 
Um, there are some well-known diseases that are autoimmune diseases, for example, multiple sclerosis. Um, I think we talk about this disease when we talk about the nervous system. So what happens is, remember, axons are wrapped by myelin sheath. Here, I have some space here, myelin sheath. So these myelin sheath insulate, insulates the axons, right? You can keep the electron signal going in this particular direction, and sometimes, you know, uh, the, the signal can jump, right, and then go faster. So uh, in multiple sclerosis, the body starts to damage, to attack and damage the myelin sheath. So without that insulation layer, the electrical signal will go, you know, all kinds of directions. So that's what causes, you know, the, the symptoms of multiple sclerosis. All right, next one is the type 1 diabetes. In this case, the cells, the beta cells in pancreas that produce insulin. So these cells are being attacked by the immune system. So without those cells, your body is going to have a very, very low level of insulin. And insulin is critical in terms of glucose metabolism. So glucose is the fuel that our cell that our cells utilize right for everyday functions. Um, so the cell is going to use mitochondria. If you're oh we haven't talked about the cell structures yet, so mitochondria. But you probably know this particular cell organelle. So mitochondrion is the singular mitochondria is the plural. So the cell utilizes its mitochondria to break down glucose and extract the, the chemical energy stored in glucose. So this is where your cell gets its fuel, gets energy, right, to do the daily work to survive. Now, in order for the cell to, uh, you know, break down glucose, let's say this is the cell, the glucose molecule has to enter the cell first, right? Uh, in another word, the cell has to be able to take in glucose, take glucose inside, right? And then the cell can use mitochondria to break down glucose and obtain the energy. The insulin, the insulin is critical in regulating the uptake of glucose into the cell. So without insulin, if insulin is not present, then the glucose molecules cannot be taken into the cell. So the cell does not have um, fuel, right? It's like your car without gasoline. Your, your car cannot do anything. So that's why insulin is so important for our daily function. Now, insulin is made by a group of special cells in the pancreas. So people with type 1 diabetes, their immune system somehow uh, treats those cells as foreign cells. So they start to kill those cells so that you don't have the cells to make insulin. So that's why type 1 diabetes patients have uh, very low, very little uh, insulin in the body. Rheumatoid arthritis, we'll talk about this condition. We'll talk about the skeletal system and specifically the joints, right? So the joint tissues are uh, being attacked by the immune system. All right, the third condition is called hypersensitivity. Hyper means high, right? In this case, your immune system is overreacting, right? Um, it's because your body is, is exposed to pathogens, but also some of um, other substances that are harmless, right? And then normally, um, a healthy person's body can recognize the substances that are harmless, and they don't mount a very aggressive immune response against those substances, right? Your body will just let them go. But for people with hypersensitivity, their immune system is overreacting to substances such as pollen or animal genders, right? Things that are not going to make you sick. That's why we call it hypersensitivity. So this condition is also known as allergies, right? Okay, now let's do some practice. I have some questions for you. Most of these questions are from the key study manuals. I made some uh, modifications. So uh, you can try to answer the questions and see if you truly understand the information. Now, I'm not going to give you 10 seconds to think about the question. If you need time to think about the question, just pause the video okay, before I reveal the answer. 
All right, number one, which of the following cell types produce antibodies? Okay, now correct, the correct answer is B cells, right? So B cells produce antibodies. Now, if I change B cells to plasma cells, that's also the correct answer, right? It's more specific. We talk about what T cells do, right? That's a cell mediated, cell mediated immunity, right? There are three types of T cells. Helper T cell is very important. They activate the B cells and the cytotoxic T cells, right? So they are kind of the boss. And that's what HIV targets, right? HIV infects specifically the helper T cells. That's important information. You may see questions on that uh, on the TEAS test. All right, dendritic cells, we mentioned this only once, and this is related to antigen presenting cells, right? Dendritic cells are a group of cells that can present part of the antigen to the cytotoxic T cells. So dendritic cells are kind of helping, like, a, like the assistants, right, in the system. So they help T cells to recognize what kind of antigen they're looking for, they should target. Right. Natural killer cells, NK cells, these cells are part of the second defense, second line of defense, right, which is still part of the innate immune system. Okay, and remember what the targets are for natural killer cells? They target infected cells, and these are virus infected cells, and they can also target cancer cells. Okay. Question two, which of the following is part of the adaptive immune system? So there might be multiple answers. Okay, the correct answer is right, humor immunity and cell mediated immunity. So those are part of the adaptive immune system system. Everything else is, is part of the innate system. Now let's look at which one's the first line, which one's is the second line. Mucous membrane, physical barrier, so that's the first line of defense. Acids in the skin and vaginal secretion, that's the chemical weapons the physical barriers have, right? So that's also first defense. Fever, inflammation, remember those two processes are second line of defense. Complement, those are antimicrobial molecules, and specifically, they are proteins. Right? And they can uh, really ramp up, stimulate the inflammatory responses, and they can also directly lyse pathogenic cells. So that's complement, which is part of the second line of defense. Antimicro antimicrobial peptides, so that's also second line of defense. So uh, they're part of the the immune molecules. Okay, number three. Vaccines are designed to activate what immune response and protect the body using what molecules? Okay, so the correct answer is vaccines are designed to make your body produce antibodies, right? And antibodies are involved in the humoral immune response and protect the body using antibodies. Number four, where do T cells mature? This T should give you a hint, right? This organ should be or should start with the letter T. So the correct answer is C, thymus. Okay. Now, uh, we'll talk about thymus a little bit more when we get to the lymphatic system. Thyroid, that's a endocrine gland and it secretes thyroid hormones, which are important for metabolism. Bone marrow is where B cells mature. Okay. And lymph nodes, those are places where the lymph is going to be kind of filtered, infected, and if there are any foreign substances, then the immune cells residing in the lymph nodes will try to take care of that. Uh, and again, I will have more details for you when we talk about the lymphatic system.